it seems like, you know, every day there's a new supplement that yeah. everyone says is the be all and end all. Right. For wellness and health. Absolutely. And it can be tough to kind of figure out where to even start. Yeah, it's a really crowded market. Yeah. It is. So speaking of a crowded market, today we're doing a deep dive on clean nutraceuticals. Right. And their CMOS capsules. Yeah, they're marketing these as like a comprehensive, right. all-in-one supplement solution. Which immediately makes me wonder if it's too good to be true. <laughs> you know? Of course. Because they're claiming that you just take one of these capsules yeah. and you're getting like six full doses exactly. of the supplement. Six full dose supplements all in one capsule. Oh, and I, they really emphasize that. And some of these ingredients yeah. are like really trendy right now. They are. Like CMOS, right? Yeah. CMOS has exploded in popularity. Yes. It's this type of red algae. Okay. And it's gotten a lot of attention, like you said, for being, you know, potentially really good for your health. Yeah. Especially for thyroid support and immunity. And it's not just, like, they pick CMOS. Right. It's like they went down the list of, like, the hottest supplements uh -huh. and said, okay, we're going to put we're gonna put this one yeah. and this one and this one. Yeah. It's a blend of a lot of popular ingredients, like you said. We've got black seed oil, mm -hmm. ashwagandha, bladder yeah, rack, right. burdock root. Bladder rack yeah. is interesting because like sea moss, it's a seaweed. Okay. And it's a source of iodine. Which is important. Which is important. You need that for your thyroid to produce hormones properly. Got it. But, and this is important to remember, you can have too much of a good thing. Yeah, that's what my mom always says. Uh-huh. Like about, about everything. It's true, though, especially with something like iodine. Yeah. Because if you start taking too much of it, yeah. it can actually be bad for your thyroid. Oh, wow. So it can actually backfire. It can. So you definitely don't want to just start taking a bunch of seaweed supplements huh. thinking it'll solve all your problems. Without talking to a doctor or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Always a good idea to talk to a healthcare provider first. Especially if you have any kind of, I don't know, thyroid issues already. Absolutely. So it's not just a cure-all, it sounds like. Right. And honestly, even though these seaweeds have been used for a long time okay. for thyroid support, the research on whether they actually work, right. especially for people who aren't deficient in iodine, okay. is still kind of up in the air. So more to look into there. Definitely. Now. Yeah. Ashwagandha. That's another one yeah. that's really interesting. Yeah. Ashwagandha is considered what we call an adaptogen. Okay. It's a type of herb, and it basically helps your body deal with stress. Right, like roll with the punches a little more. Exactly, yeah. I've definitely heard of people, a lot of people taking that for stress. Yeah, it's becoming more popular. On sleep. Right. Yeah, sleep too. Like helping you get better sleep, that's what I've heard. Yeah, and there is some research to back that up. Okay. There have been studies on ashwagandha. Interesting. That show it might actually help with stress levels. Oh, wow. And sleep quality. Like, is there a specific study that comes to mind? Yeah. So there was one in 2019. Okay. It was published in the Journal of Alternative and Complementary Medicine. Oh. And they found that people who took ashwagandha yeah. had significantly less stress and anxiety okay. co compared to the people who just took a placebo. So it actually seems like it was like doing something. It else. seems that way. Yeah. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah, it is promising. Yeah. But of course, like with most things in the supplement world, right. we always need more research. Of course. To really know for sure. And know how it interacts with other things. Exactly, yeah. Right. Because you never know. And how much you should be taking and all that. He's yeah. It sounds like a good rule of thumb is like, even if it's natural. Yeah. It's not necessarily, you know, always good or, or risk free. Right. Just because something is natural right. doesn't mean it's automatically safe or effective for everyone. Okay. okay. And it doesn't mean we fully understand it yet either. Right. So more to come on all this. Exactly. This yeah. is just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. There's a lot more to uncover here. Absolutely. With clean nutraceuticals. Don't definitely. It's really interesting to see how much of, you know, kind of traditional medicine and these ingredients that have been used for centuries mm -hmm. are having this like resurgence right like everyone's suddenly talking about ashwagandha you know? yeah it's definitely having a moment but like you were saying it's like how much can we actually say right about what it does based on like you yeah. know what our ancestors were doing with it yeah exactly and that's where the science comes in right. because we need to be able to bridge that gap right between traditional use and you know what we can actually prove and especially because this is a supplement i imagine yeah I mean, there are probably different doses of this stuff. Yeah. 
Dosage is a huge question. Right. And also potential interactions. Right. Yep. Like if you're taking ashwagandha and sea moss and all these things together. Right. Is that. Okay. Yeah. We don't necessarily know yet. And that actually brings up a good point yeah. because they really seem yeah. to lean into the whole, you know, one capsule replaces six. Yeah. The convenience factor. Right. And that's definitely appealing. But do you really think it's that much cheaper than buying like six separate bottles of things? Well, you know, it seems like it would be, right? Uh, I mean, just looking at it. It's like a no-brainer. Yeah, just one and done. Right. But it's not always that simple. Okay, why not? Because it depends on, like, how much of each ingredient they're actually using uh, and the quality of those ingredients. Oh, I see. So it's not like they're giving you, like, the same amount that you'd get in, in a single bottle of something. Right. And the other thing to think about is, like, what if you realize that you really love ashwagandha? Okay. Like, you're seeing great results. Yeah. But you're not really sure about the sea moss. Okay. With this blend, you're kind of stuck. Yeah, that's true. You can't really adjust the doses individually. You're locked in. Exactly. And what about the burdock root? What is that all about? Oh, yeah, burdock root. Right. Because that one, I feel like I've seen that one around. It's been used in traditional medicine for a long time. Okay. Especially for, like, cleansing and detoxifying. Okay. And there are some people who believe that it's a powerful antioxidant. Great. And that it can reduce inflammation. And I was going to say, like, I feel like I've seen that one in, like, Skincare stuff. Yeah, you're right. Like serums and stuff. It's popping up in beauty products more and more. Interesting. Because there's some early research that suggests okay. it might be good for your skin. So maybe that's like, you know, they're marketing this as like right. helping your skin. Yeah, like a multi-pronged approach. And your stress and your like everything. Yeah, they're definitely casting a wide net. Right. It's mm -hmm. like this cure-all. It makes you wonder if it can really deliver on all those promises. Yeah, and I mean like how much... How much can we actually trust? It's a good question. These claims, because, like, I know that you looked into this, but yeah, they really push the fact that they have thousands yeah. of positive reviews on Amazon. Oh yeah, they love to mention that, and that they're like Amazon's choice product or whatever. Mm -hmm. So don't get me wrong, right. customer reviews are important, right? But they're not the same thing as scientific evidence. So you're saying like. Just because yeah. a bunch of people on Amazon say it's great exactly. doesn't necessarily mean... Right. It doesn't mean it actually works. Yeah, it's like magic, right? Exactly. And, you know, sometimes people see results from supplements right. because of the placebo effect. Right. Like they're expecting it to work. So they right. feel like it's working. And that's totally valid. Yeah. But it's not the same as the supplement right. actually causing those effects. Okay. So we have to kind of like be careful Yes. about... Just assuming that you know, a public opinion is the same as scientific proof. Right. We need those controlled studies to yeah. really know for sure. So it's really, you know, buyer beware. Exactly. When it comes to this kind of thing. You really have to be your own advocate. And I imagine that can feel really overwhelming. Oh, absolutely. Especially if you're like new to this whole world yeah. of supplements and you're just kind of like, wait. Yeah. There's all these different ingredients. You feel like a lot. And everyone's telling me different things. Exactly. So where do you even begin? Yeah. What would you say to like to our <laughs> listeners who are kind of in that boat right now? First and foremost, yeah. I would say think of it like any other health decision. You know? So like <laughs> do your research. Yeah. Talk to your doctor. Don't just take a company's word for it. Right. Even if they have a really slick website. Exactly. Haha. <laughs> Marketing can be very persuasive. Yeah. And even if, you know, they have a million five star reviews. Right. Testimonials are great. But they're not the whole story. What would you say is, like, the most trustworthy source of info? Well, I always recommend checking with reputable organizations. Okay. So, like, the National Institutes of Health right. or the Mayo Clinic, places yeah. like that. Okay. They have a lot of evidence-based information. So kind of like, you know, peer-reviewed research and things like that. Exactly. Yeah, look for studies that have been published in reputable journals. Okay. That's really how you can get to the bottom of whether something actually works. And I think it's easy to forget yeah. that everyone's different, too. Absolutely. Like, what works for one person totally. might not work for another person. Your body is unique. Yeah. So you might react differently to certain things. Exactly. And and this is really important. Yeah. No matter what supplements you're thinking about taking, okay. remember that they're meant to supplement a healthy lifestyle. Right. They're not a quick fix. Exactly. They're not a substitute for eating well, yeah. exercising, right. getting enough sleep. Right. All that good stuff. All the boring stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah. The stuff we know we should be doing. Exactly. But, you know, 
maybe there's some things that can help us along the way. Yeah, and that's what supplements can be good for. Right. They can fill in the gaps. Okay, so kind of like putting it all together here. Yeah. The big takeaway is. What's that? Be informed. Exactly. Do your research. Ask questions. Talk to your doctor. And don't be afraid to be a little skeptical. Yeah, a little healthy skepticism. Never hurt anyone. Exactly. Well, this has been super interesting. Yeah, I always learn something new when we do these deep dives. Me too, me too. And I hope our listeners did as well. I hope so too. So until next time, everyone, stay curious. And stay informed. Exactly.